Now, when we are designing FIR filters, uh, there are a few things that we should keep in mind in terms of the in terms of the practical aspect. So, one thing is, of course, we talked about earlier that we want our FIR filter to be causal. So, we are always looking for causal. FIR filters, and that's also true for IAR filters. And causality is really easy to define in terms of uh, the impulse response, which is that H of n has to be equal to zero for all n less than zero. Right? And this is what we want for practical systems. So Causality is of always taken for granted. It always exists. Now, the other main thing that you want to do for FIR filters is what is called a linear phase filter. So, linear phase FIR filters are a real important class of filters, and that is one of the reasons why we want to work with FIR filters. Okay? So, a key distinction is that FIR filters can be made to be linear phase. On the other hand, IIR filters are, or let's call them causal IIR filters, are almost impossible to be made linear phase. So that is one of the reasons that IIR filters are not preferred for applications such as speech processing or music processing or things like that because they are not linear phase. Okay, so what is a linear phase filter? So a filter has of impulse response HN and it has but the impulse response doesn't tell us that much information, so we want to go to the frequency response. Which is H of E to the J omega. Now the frequency response is made up of two components. One is the magnitude response, so the magnitude of your filter. The, and the other is the phase response, so h of e to the j omega, or argument of h of e to the j omega. Now, so far, we have only focused on uh, the magnitude response. So we often only talk about the magnitude response. And the question is, is the phase, why is that? Is the phase response not of any value? Okay. And that's what we are going to talk about, which is that phase response can really change what your filter does to your input signal depending upon whether it is linear phase or not. So in general, magnitude response, the only thing magnitude response is telling you is that how do the input frequencies get changed? For example, if your input, if my voice, let's assume that my voice was made up of only two frequencies pi by 4 and pi by 3. Now, magnitude response will tell me that my filter is going to attenuate, let's say, pi by 4 frequency more, and it's going to attenuate my pi by 3 frequency less. But also when I am speaking, the pi, 
what makes my voice is not just the two frequencies. The two frequencies, pi by three frequency, pi by four frequency, is really how they interact with each other. Okay? It's at some level, think of English language, you can say a word has an alphabet A and an alphabet E. But whether the alphabet A comes before E or after E changes the meaning of your word. Right? So frequencies are components which make up my speech. But my speech, when I talk about it, the frequencies also have relative position to each other. Maybe one frequency will appear first and then the next frequency will appear. So there is this timing information which magnitude response does not capture. Right? It is, again, taking the analogy of English language, words, if I just say that a word has three letters, T, H, and E, well, it can be the T, H, E, or I could make it E, H, T, which may not make any sense. Right? Why? Because I'm keeping the three components the same, but I have shifted how they were located with respect to each other. So that's the view you should take with respect to magnitude response, which tells you, you input some frequencies and you get back the same frequencies, but it doesn't tell you what is the order in which you received those frequencies. So, the, the phase response of a filter is effectively carrying the timing information of different frequencies and in most cases it cannot be ignored So let's write down the frequency response as h of e to the j omega equals to the magnitude response times the phase response which I'm going to write as e to the j theta omega. So theta omega, of course, phase response is just how the phase of a frequency is shifted. So it's a function of omega. Now let's look at it for a particular frequency. So Let's take the example of h of e to the j omega equal to e to the minus j omega n naught. Okay. So in this case, my phase, my magnitude response is of course one. So this is a filter which does nothing to the magnitude, but the phase response is this theta omega function is minus omega n naught. And we know what is the impulse response of this filter. The impulse response is simply hn equals delta of n minus n naught. So what this says is that if your phase response is of the form minus omega and naught, then all that is happening to your input signal is that it is getting delayed. Right? So what, what the phase response says is that depending upon your frequency, you are creating a phase shift which is proportional to n naught, and in time limit, what it means is that it is delaying all of your frequencies in time by the same amount. So a phase, a phase response of this nature is effectively moving all of, it's just shifting your frequencies, but it is keeping the order of the frequencies the same. It is as if you have the letters T, H, and E in that order, and the phase response which is of this form minus omega and naught, 
it moves all the frequencies forward. So maybe if it was written at the start of the page, it moves all three letters to the end of the page, but it keeps their order the same. Right? So there is a delay, but the order stays the same. Okay? And that is this that is the phase response of this nature minus omega and naught. Okay? So this is called linear phase. Linear phase means it's a linear function of frequency. Right. Because if you want to delay a frequency by the same amount for a higher for a high for a higher frequency, you need to create a higher phase shift. Okay, so that's why it's getting multiplied with omega. And a linear phase omega and naught simply means that all frequencies. in the input signal are delayed by the same amount. of n naught samples. Okay. <clears throat> and so linear phase is a very desirable property. is desired since our perception of signals is not always just which frequencies are present. but also the order in which they appear in the signal. Okay. So linear phase ensures that the order of the frequencies that you have is preserved in the output signal. If your filter is linear phase, then the output order is not changed, and in that case, you can only focus on the magnitude response. So now, it's not always possible to have a perfect linear phase. So how do people determine how close you are to the linear phase? It is measured through what's called the group delay. Okay. So the linear phase is described often in terms of a quantity called the group delay. And the definition of that is you compute, so your, let's say you are given the phase response H of E, so e, e to the J, the angle of your frequency response, and you write that as E to the J theta omega, so it's some function of omega. What you do is, the group delay tau g of omega is simply you take the derivative of whatever is next to j, e to the j. So you take the derivative of theta omega with respect to omega, and then you multiply it with a negative sign. Okay. Group delay is effectively telling you how many samples a particular frequency is delayed. Okay. So in the previous example, when theta omega 
was minus omega n naught this means that the group delay is n naught right so what this says is that all of your frequencies are being delayed by the same amount which is a good thing okay on the other hand let's say that you had a filter whose theta omega was minus 2 omega squared so you compute the group delay and that comes out to be 2 omega what this means is that higher frequencies are being delayed more so this is a constant group delay is good non constant is bad constant corresponds to linear phase okay a constant group delay corresponds to linear phase so because of this reason you want to work with filters especially if your if your input signal has physical meaning if it imparts some perception for example voice or speech or music or any other thing where it is not just the frequencies but the order of frequencies matter then it is very important to have a filter which is linear phase or alternatively to have a filter whose group delay is a constant or near constant and fir filters are preferred because of that because fir filters can be very easily made to have linear phase where ir filters cannot be made to have linear phase or causal ir filters this should be 4 omega so in matlab most visual tools like fda tool or a frequency visualization tool we have been looking at the magnitude response but if you go and look at the phase response you get this kind of a curve of course you have these shifts of 2 pi because you are getting the values exactly between uh minus pi and pi but the right thing to look at here is this uh group delay minus d theta or d omega okay and you look at this and this has a group delay of 2 okay now if i whether i can make my fir filter linear phase or not actually will come to the that's the next topic you can design fir filters to have a constant group delay or linear phase but that requires you to satisfy certain properties in particular um, if i stop if i don't satisfy certain properties then i can actually make my group delay non constant okay so here is a case where i am still working with an fir filter but the way i place the zeros my group delay is no longer constant which means that my phase response is no longer linear okay so you look at my phase response it has this non linearity here it's linear in the other region but here it doesn't it's non linear and i can see that through this uh group delay profile okay so ideally you want this to be as close to constant as possible and as i have felt as we always talk about being linear phase and there are four if when you talk about linear phase as i have felt as then there are only four basic pro types of fir filters that you can make which will be the topic of our next discussion